Today's passage is Acts chapter 6, uh, verse 2 to 6. New Testament Acts chapter 6 to verse 2 to 6. As I read through the passage, I hope that all of us can hear the voice of the living God. So the twelve gathered all the disciples together and said it would not be right for us to neglect the ministry of the word of God in order to wait on tables. Brothers, choose seven men from among you who are known to be full of the spirit and wisdom. We will turn this responsibility over them and will give our attention to prayer and the ministry of the word. This proposal pleased the whole group. They chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit, also Philip, Prochorus, Nicador, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas from Antioch, a convert to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles who prayed and laid their hands on them. Amen. So, uh, my brothers and sisters of Jesus Christ, um, how are you doing? And it's good to see you all. The members who are in this church and who are joining this service on online. So still we cannot be together all of us here, but uh, we are now having this Panicast Sunday. I really wish it that all the members uh, could be here together, but things are not safe and I'm so sad that we cannot be here together. So. Um, Thank you for coming and um, all of um, the people who are joining the surveys online. I wish you will have the blessings and the grace of God. So the COVID-19 is really changing everything in our life. Even the way that we join the worship service and the way that we lead the life and how we go to church and how we work and how we eat at restaurants. So things are not the same anymore. So this Wuhan pneumonia or the China pneumonia is now changing every part of our life and uh, we are now learning or we have to learn to live with it. So uh, many people are now uh, very concerned about the post-COVID-19 for churches, for the country, for the economy. And uh, we are now very um, cautious and concerned about what to come after this coronavirus. So as we are having this Pentecost Sunday um, amid this pandemic, I felt so sad because I really wish that we could join the service and that's what I told you. However, I mean, we could join the service together. But as you may know, the Pentecost Sunday means a lot. It, um, what happened when the disciples gathered together in Mark's upper room and received the Holy Spirit. So in this sense, getting together and uh, joining the service together means a lot for this uh, Pentecost Sunday, but we couldn't do that today. So as I was thinking about this, I was so sad we couldn't join the Easter Sunday together. But we had these offerings and we send it for the people in need. So we could be a part of that together, but we are not be uh, we cannot be here together for this Pentecost Sunday. So it's so sad. And in regard to this COVID-19, I was giving many thoughts. So um, what this would mean for us and um, what did the Pentecost mean for the early Christians. So it might be something like the COVID-19 that we are experiencing. Um, I mean, because the COVID-19 changed everything in our life and the things are not anymore since we are starting to have this COVID-19. And that might have been something that's happened to the early Christians when they received the Holy Spirit. Of course, um, I mean, we are having this COVID-19 and things are not the same anymore. And in the same manner, the coming of the Holy Spirit really changed it, um, the life and the way of living and um, worshiping for the early Christians. So that leads to another question. So um, when we think about this coming of the Holy Spirit, how are we really living after we receive the Holy Spirit, how are we really taking it? I mean, even with this whole COVID-19, 
we are starting to learn to live with it. But what about the coming of the Holy Spirit? As believers of Jesus Christ, with this amazing experience of the descent of the Holy Spirit, how are we taking it in our life? And are we really living by the Holy Spirit? That was the question I asked it. For the believers, things must be different before and after the descent of the Holy Spirit. When Christianity was first born, when we had the first churches, the day of the descent of the Holy Spirit is described in Acts chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. So this passage describes a very dramatic scene when the Holy Spirit was on the disciples. And there is one term that really caught our eyes, which is they were filled with the Holy Spirit. So this term of filled with the Holy Spirit can be found in many parts of the Bible, being filled with the Holy Spirit. And even today, we say this term a lot. It's a term that we use a lot in churches and Christianity. So Paul said in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18, instead, be filled with the Spirit. That's what he was saying to people. So since the descent of the Holy Spirit for the Christians, the Holy Spirit and being filled with Holy Spirit is really important for Christians and that's the best and um, the most wished uh, type of blessings and that's one uh, great vision and idol for Christians and people really pray to receive the Holy Spirit that is one wish that we really want to uh, be fulfilled but on the other hand, some people say, well, I'm not sure about receiving the Holy Spirit. So when we say that you must receive the Holy Spirit, then some people may say, no, not now, maybe later. I want to have just a bit of the Holy Spirit, not the full of it. Of course, I know it is a joke, but it means something when they say that. So when we are filled with the Holy Spirit, all of my life will be changed and I cannot have any control over my life. We have to be the preachers, we have to join the ministry, and we have to pray and um, preach the gospel. So some people are reluctant to be filled with the Holy Spirit because they want to have this comfy life. And when things are all right for them, they, then they want to have this Holy Spirit. But the true blessing of the Holy Spirit is not like that. If you really know about it, then I am sure you will be willing to take it. So what does that mean? What kind of state or what does it feel like when we are filled with the Holy Spirit? Um, these days, the coronavirus, the COVID-19 is now really sweeping the world. And people talk about the symptoms of being um, infected with a virus. So likewise, there are some symptoms that we can tell um, if we have or if we are filled with the Holy Spirit. So what does it feel like and what does it look like when we are filled with the Holy Spirit? So you may want to know that. So that's what I want to share with you today about this being uh, filled with the Holy Spirit. So first, before we talk about the Holy Spirit, let's take a look at what it means to be filled with. In the Greek word, there are a few words that describe being filled with. And of those, there are two uh, commonly used words when we say we are filled with the Holy Spirit. 
The first thing is the verb flare, and also the objective of that is the flares. That is one word, and there is another verb which is flat though, and also and pin premi is um, another one. So these words are used in many parts of the Bible to describe being filled with the Holy Spirit. So when we say you are filled with the Holy Spirit, we use these two different Greek words in the Bible. Um, I just mentioned four different words, but two are quite similar in terms of the meaning. So I will only pick these two, flares and pimpremi as I explained about the two different meanings of the words. In some places, um, we use plares, and in other places, we use the pimpremi. So they are used for a bit different purposes. They can be um, used interchangeably, but, but they mean something different in detail. So people, some scholars say, it's hard to tell the difference, but when you look into um, in depth, then these two different words have different meanings and different nuances. So uh, let's explore in more detail. So first, pimpremi is the word. So it mean, means to satisfy, to fill, and it means that something is really full. But it means something is really filled with something at one moment. So it's about like the momentary feeling or satisfaction. When you look at the Bibles and how to use uh, this word, it may help you to better understand. In Ezekiel chapter 16, this word was used to describe um, sexual satisfaction. And uh, Luke chapter 5 and verse 7, um, it is about the salmon and the um, disciples were fishing and they were drawing the nets and they could have a lot of fish and um, they had them on their boat and their boat was filled with the fish and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. So. Here, the Bible used the word pimpremi. So it was a kind of a feeling. I mean, when you pull, put down the nets filled with the fish, then the boats will become very heavy and be filled. That's pimpremi. And in Matthew chapter 22, verse 10, the master asked the servants to bring in people, and then in the party, there will be many people. So that's the Matthew chapter 22, verse 10. So the servants went out into the streets and gathered all the people they could find, both good and bad, and the wedding hall was filled with guests. So here you can see the filled with the guests. So it's like the scene where a number of people are getting together, and the hall is being filled with uh, guest at one moment. And also you can see that in Luke chapter 4 and chapter 6 and in chapter 5 you can see that where the Jesus was healing the patient with leprosy. Everyone was amazed and gave praise to God. They were filled with awe and said, we have seen remarkable things today. And here they were filled with awe in the Greek word, it said it, they were filled with awe, and um, suddenly they, their hearts were filled with the awe, and that happens at one moment. And also chapter 6 as well, Jesus healed the people whose hands were shriveled on the Sabbath day, and the people were upset. In Greek word, it said, the teachers of the law were so mad. They kind of lost their temper at one moment. And um, here, what they used for that description was the pimpremi. 
So these are also what we can see when we um, um, look at the Bible, when they describe the filling of the Holy Spirit. So that's the Luke chapter 1. And the Holy Spirit really fills the Elizabeth. And also, we can see the same usage of the word in other parts of the Bible as well. So the and Pimpremi is also used in other parts of the Bible in the verse 31 of Acts chapter 4 we can see they were praying and the place where they were meeting was shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit so when the Holy Spirit comes down at one moment like momentarily then we use the term pimprami so it's about um, receiving the Holy Spirit where the Holy Spirit really takes the lead and uh, prophesying so God is giving us the Holy Spirit to fix something or to do something so it's a very powerful descent of the Holy Spirit so when you read the Bible you can see that the Holy Spirit does not stay for good with us but this type of Holy Spirit is given us at one moment so that we can do the work of God, to do the mission that God gave us and God allow us to be with or to be filled with the Holy Spirit temporarily to do the job that God gave us to do. So when he needs to really preach the gospel, then he gave this Holy Spirit and that's what he did with the disciples so that like over 3,000 people can be saved and be the follower of Jesus. Sitifan, um was about to die and to be killed. And right at the moment, God filled him with the Holy Spirit. And with that, Stephen could be the first martyr. And that's what it means to be filled with the Holy Spirit in terms of the Pimprami. Here we need to think about one more thing. So this filling with the Holy Spirit is given us by God so that we can do the, do the job that God wants us to do and join the working of God. And it can be shown as um, we as we speak in a tongue or as we preach the gospel or become able or strong. And that was to fulfill the words of God. That was to preach the gospel. That was to fulfill the workings of God. And that was not for the good of the people. So God gave us this whole Holy Spirit to preach the gospel and to fulfill his words and to do his work. That is the key part of being fulfilled or being filled with the Holy Spirit. Let's take it this way. When we have a patient, we pray. We all pray in one heart. And uh, when we pray together desperately, then we are filled with the Holy Spirit that's given by God. And then the patient is healed. That is the filling of the Holy Spirit. When the preacher gives a sermon and then the preacher and the church members, as we listen to the words, we feel that we are filled with the Holy Spirit as we receive the words of God. And then we see the changes in our life that happens when we are filled with the Holy Spirit. It's not about possessing the Holy Spirit. It's not about that. It is given us by God to do the work of God. So this whole filling with the Holy Spirit in terms of the Pimpremi is very dynamic. Because God can give it to us whenever He needs and He fills us with this Holy Spirit of Pimprami. We don't have it in us, but whenever God needs to do that, He can give it to us.
to do his work. Dear Murray Church members, as you are here, I do believe that you can receive the Holy Spirit, but before that, you have to think about what you're going to do with the Holy Spirit. And uh, when you do that, He will give you the strength. He will give you the power. He will give you the ability. And when you pray, when you comfort others, you will fill this Holy Spirit because that is the first um, meaning of being filled with the Holy Spirit. And that is another word that is used to describe the filling of the Holy Spirit. And also, of course, that is coming from the same origin of the word, but they are used in a different places in the Bible. That is flalo or flatteress. And this word is more about a journey of being filled or getting filled with the Holy Spirit. In Luke chapter 5, verse 12, you see there is a man covered with leprosy. And there is a term that says the man was covered with leprosy. And this being covered means the flares. So the whole leprosy is now spreading throughout his body and devouring the patient. So this the focus here is more about the journey and the transition or the change that's being made. And also Acts chapter 9, verse 36 talks about Tavita. And there's another term. So in Joppa, there was a disciple named Tabitha, which when translated is Torkas, who was always doing good and helping the poor. So doing good was what um, she was doing a lot. So always doing good, that's the translation of the flowers. So filled with the good deeds was how she was described. It was not just happening one day. It was not just about one day or one off event. This whole act of doing good happens over time and every day and then this disciple was filled with this good deed. Of course, flowers may used to describe some like a momentary um, feeling or emotions. So some scholars say there is no like um, defined rule of how we have to use the different words. So some people don't agree to that, but we can see this different usage of the words in different parts of the Bible. And uh, Matthew chapter 14, verse 12, uh, 20, they had 12 baskets of leftovers. And here we also see they were satisfied and uh, we can see that they were filled with these whole broken pieces that were left over. It may happen just at one moment or one second, but when they use this term of flares, it's happening over time. Things are picked up and the pieces were picked up and we can see that these whole baskets are getting um, filled over time. So given this perspective, uh, we can better understand the first Corinthian chapter 12, verse 2. Or verse 3, therefore I tell you that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus be cursed, and no one can say, Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. So when we confess that Jesus is our Lord, then we are spoken by Holy Spirit. So the moment that we say Jesus is our Lord, then we are already being filled with the Holy Spirit. So it's like as we pick up one piece of um, bread, we are taking steps to be filled with the Holy Spirit. We are baptized and we can experience this whole filling with the Jesus and the Holy Spirit. And as we follow Jesus, as we read the Bible and pray, we can transition into being filled with the Holy Spirit. Today, we're going to have the baptism ceremony this afternoon. And for those who will be baptized today, you are already in the transition of being uh, filled with the Holy Spirit. 
So you will see the changes in your faith and your life. So the key point here is that being filled with the Holy Spirit takes time and it takes over time and it's a journey. It doesn't happen just at a particular time or event and um, the working of Holy Spirit is already there in our heart and it will have broader impact in our life and it will grow further. And uh, today's passage, um, Acts chapter 6 and verse 3, you can see that as well. Brothers, choose seven men among you who are known to be full of spirit and wisdom. We will turn this responsibility over to them and will give our attention to prayer and the ministry of the word. So here we see the full of the spirit, the term in that is the translation of flares. So that happens like over time, we are gradually getting filled with the Holy Spirit. And when God wants us or he wants to use us for his working, then he will give us this Holy Spirit. So in today's passage, we saw that flares. In the Acts chapter 11 and verse 24, the same expression was used to describe how Barnabas was filled with the Holy Spirit. So it's more about the character, um, his character being filled with the Holy Spirit. So to summarize, being filled with the Holy Spirit happens when the Holy Spirit works in us. That is a whole journey. And with the Holy Spirit, we can confess that Jesus is our Lord and we can better understand Jesus Christ. And also, we will start to bear the fruits of Holy Spirit, which is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. These whole fruits of the Holy Spirit will grow and we will have a lot of these spiritual fruits. That happens when we are filled with the Holy Spirit. And Ephesians chapter 5, uh, verse 18, it says, instead, be filled with the Spirit. So it also shows that it is a journey that takes over time. So when we are filled with the Holy Spirit, the flares is more about the journey of being filled with the Holy Spirit. And from this perspective, the fruit of the Holy Spirit is what's matter, uh, what matters here. But when you look at it from the Pimprami perspective, then the gift of the Holy Spirit is what that matter. But here is one thing that you have to remember. Being filled with the Holy Spirit has two different aspects. You have to experience it over time, but it may happen at one moment. So the gift the spiritual gifts means that we are filled with the Holy Spirit at one moment, but the fruits means that it's a whole journey of getting filled with the Holy Spirit. So we can be filled with the Holy Spirit, and that starts at the moment when we confess that Jesus is our Lord and also Pimprami type of the filling with the Holy Spirit is a gift and a grace that God gives us or God gives us when he needs to have that. And we can have that when we are willing to do his job and when we want to be used for his working. However, if you decline that, if you say no to being used for his own um, workings, then you may not be able to experience that. But still, in our life, we still see and we have God in our life who works every day and every moment. When you say Jesus is our Lord, then Holy Spirit will be in your life and he will fill your life and he will change your life. So today we had this um, Pentecost Sunday, and I hope you will be filled with the Holy Spirit and have a great Sunday. So let's pray. Dear Lord, our Father, 
you gave the Holy Spirit as a gift, and we want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And uh, with your words, we want to enjoy and um, find the joy in the Holy Spirit. And we want to practice holiness in our life and say that you are our Lord. And we want to be the people of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.